Hello friends, Dr. David Katz with another COVID reality check video. And I know it's been a minute since the last one. And you know the reasons for that I think may be self-evident. Uh, there is plenty of opinion and perspective on the pandemic at this point. Uh, I want to contribute only when I think there's something really important to address. I also think this far into our common experience with the pandemic, people are pretty dug in. Everybody views it the way they view it and you know, the opportunity to use perspective and commentary to influence people is less than it was in the early going. But there is a timely issue and that's should you vaccinate your kids, your, your teens, your tweens and, and your younger kids. Uh, obviously those of you who are uh, opposed to vaccines are gonna tune out here. Uh, those of you who've already vaccinated your whole family, you can tune out. But I am seeing this question come up, and it's a legitimate question. The, the goal of vaccination is, you know, is not that this is zero risk and a panacea. The, the reason that I've been a career-long proponent of vaccines is they're massively better for individual and public health than the diseases they prevent. You know, much better to get measles vaccines than to get the measles. Um, much better to vaccinate against hepatitis B than to get hepatitis B, which by the way can lead to cirrhosis and end-stage liver disease and, and on and on it goes. And, and this is clearly true in the case of COVID. Uh, you know, there's an awful lot of rhetoric about the potential dangers of the vaccine. And, and there are potential complications of, of the vaccine, although uh, the VIRS database, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, is being misrepresented and weaponized. I've written about that. I'll share that link. But th there, there certainly are some potential harms of the various vaccines. Uh, that's not the issue. The issue is, are those harms massively less than the likely harms of getting exposed to SARS-CoV-2, getting infected, and being harmed by the infection? That answer is clear for most populations. The potential dangers of the virus are massively greater than any potential inadvertent harms of the vaccines. But that hasn't been as clear for healthy kids. And there's been really thoughtful commentary on that very topic by people I respect a lot, Marty McCary, uh, Vinay Prasad, and I will again attach links to those uh, commentaries. Here's the difficulty though. The pandemic remains, as it has been all along, a moving target. And with the rising prevalence and predominance of the Delta variant, one of the trends that's now being reported in the United States is more and more serious infection among un unvaccinated young people, including kids. And I don't think the issue is fully resolved. So, you know, what exactly should the age cutoffs be? where there is a decisive benefit, a reduction in risk with vaccination, what are the health cutoffs? So, you know, for example, if, if perfectly healthy eight-year-olds are exposed to the Delta variant, are they going to get really sick? Because, you know, the issue isn't are, are they going to get infected. If they get infected, develop immunity, and aren't harmed, then vaccination isn't really preventing a harm in them because they're not being harmed anyway, at least so far as we know. I, it, I guess it's conceivable that some of the long haul symptoms could emerge in, in young people too. But you know, again, there, there's so many layers of speculation and conjecture here, we can get lost in it. Let's keep it simple. Up until now, uh, SARS-CoV-2 has been pretty innocuous, not completely innocuous. There, there are always anomalies, but pretty innocuous in healthy kids, not so in kids with chronic disease, not so in kids with severe obesity, but in, in genuinely healthy kids, it's been pretty innocuous. Well, if the infection is innocuous, it really raises the bar for the safety profile of the vaccine before you can recommend it, which is why some of my very thoughtful colleagues have weighed in and said, we're, we're strong vaccine proponents for the population at large, but it's not so clear cut for healthy kids. But the Delta variant is changing that equation. Uh, and I don't think we have a definitive answer yet. I think it's a perfectly legitimate question, should I vaccinate my kids? I, I think, you know, again, I, I'm a vaccine proponent and I think the COVID vaccines, all of them, all the ones that are approved for use, are massively safer for adults than risking exposure to COVID. And I say that just as, as somebody who used my robust health as, as my best defense against SARS-CoV-2 when I got it before the vaccines were available, 
uh, and you know, here it is more than six months later, I still have residual symptoms. That This infection is no joke, even for people with extraordinarily good health, and I put myself in that category. But I'm, I'm not entirely clear uh, on what to do about young kids. I would definitely recommend people asking that question, you should be vaccinated so that you know, if your kids uh, are potential sources of the virus, um, you know, the, the risks of Delta in adults are clearly higher than the risks of the prior strains. You're more likely to get it and you're more likely to get really sick. So make sure you're protected. Uh, but it does look like the risk of the infection is rising even for healthy young people. So my best advice at this time is um, confer with you know, health professionals who know you and you know, whom you know and trust about vaccinating your kids. So ideally you have a pediatrician you know and trust. Um, I would think seriously about vaccinating teens and tweens at this point because it does look like Delta and there are, there are other variants with even more mutations that are, that are currently looming out there. Uh, they do seem more likely to produce significant illness in young people. And then how do you make sure that any risks associated with the vaccines are massively lower than the risk of the infection? Because that's really the goal with any vaccination campaign. Well, the particular risks we've seen with the mRNA vaccine, so that would be Pfizer and Moderna, the one that concerns me most is the, the risk of heart inflammation or myocarditis. And that's been observed almost exclusively, and it's pretty rare, but it's been observed in healthy young men. Uh, not obvious that it occurs in boys earlier than adolescents, but adolescent boys, healthy young men. And um, it, for whatever reason, and it may have something to do with the expression of uh, certain receptors on, on cells that, that occur at different rates in, in males and females, this has not been observed in females at all. So I would favor the mRNA vaccines in girls. Um, if you are concerned about your tween or teen son, I would favor the adenovirus vaccine. That's the Johnson & Johnson because the, the risk associated with Johnson & Johnson, also rare, um, has been blood clots. And, and I suspect, by the way, that those blood clots occurred in women who had other risk factors, either behavioral, uh, and that could be smoking or use of oral contraceptives or genetic or both. And there, there are specific genes that increase the risk of blood clot formation and uh, more common in women um, because they're associated with the X chromosome. So uh, I would favor mRNA vaccines in girls and young women, and I would favor the adenovirus vaccine, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine in boys and young men because again, the goal here is to maximize the, the margin of benefit between the vaccine and the infection. And exactly how dangerous the Delta variant infection is in young people is a story that's still being written. But I'm weighing in now because I think it, it, it's time to make those decisions. Um, you know, I, I'm getting the question in my inbox what do you think I should do? We're vaccinated. Should we vaccinate our kids? So as best I can tell, given the magnitude of risk associated with the Delta variant, yes, I think you should vaccinate your kids, but it's a close call. I, I, I am by no means wagging a finger at you or ranting. I, I'm just thinking out loud. It's not outrageous to say really healthy kids, as long as we're, we the adults are vaccinated, we're going we're gonna to ride this out and see because we think they're going to be fine. But it's a close call. The Delta variant is changing the math. So I think for many of you, the right decision would be, yes, proceed with vaccination, but then you want to minimize the risks of the vaccine, maximize the, the safety gap. And I think you best do that by favoring, if you have access to all the different varieties of vaccines, favor the adenovirus vaccine in boys, so that's the Johnson & Johnson, favor the mRNA vaccine for girls, that's Pfizer and Moderna. I hope this is helpful. Uh, I don't know if I'll be back again or not. Uh, I will continue to opine if I think I've got a meaningful contribution to make and keep to myself when I think otherwise. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe, be well.